So in this video, I'm going to be looking at translations and the methods for graphing them and changing the equations for sine and cos graphs. So I'm actually only going to go over sine graphs. However, the exact same methods apply to cos graphs. And as you've seen in previous videos, they're interrelatable um, with regards to shape. They're very similar. So once you know how to do all the translations for the sine graphs and you're confident with those, then you also will be able to do the cos graphs as well. So we'll begin with translation in the y-axis. So this is effectively moving the graph up or down. So we've seen this before in previous graphs, but what about for this sine graph? So if, firstly, translation in the y-axis. This is when we are replacing x, uh, y with y minus k. So if we want to move it up two units, then k will equal 2. So that means we're going to get y minus 2 is equal to sine x. Therefore, y is equal to sine x plus 2. So effectively what we're doing now is we're shifting this graph up two units. So visually, if this was just sine x, we're shifting up two units. That means we're just going to move it up here. So And it's moved up. And then it'll continue, like before, uh, in a cyclical pattern. So what's this point up here? This point is going to be 0, 2. And then you're going to have that point there, which will be uh, pi 2. Then you're going to have a point down here, and then all these different points along there. So what we've done is we've literally just shifted every single point up 2. So whatever it was before, it is now that value, the y value, plus 2. So what I like to think about this is, uh, how to graph it and a good way to think about it is that there's a line of symmetry and that's along here so if as you can see there the sine graph goes up and down along this line when it's down on the x-axis without any translation in the y-axis it's there's sort of a line of symmetry along the x-axis and that means like when you drawing along the x you can go like that and then up again and then up down and it's just going to be the same on the top and the bottom. But that's not the case when you translate it up. However, this line of symmetry, symmetry also moves up as well. So that means you have a line here, which is y equals 2. And it means that the sine graph, as you can see, it goes up, hits that line, and then goes down, and then it reflects itself on the negative side. This also helps, as you can think, when we originally had that graph down below, the graph looked like this. So when we calculate the x-intercepts, so these are all the x-intercepts. Now, these x-intercepts are the exact same values for when it intercepts a new line of symmetry at y equals 2. And that's because we've now shifted the graph up two units. So I find it's easier to graph with drawing this line in. So just drawing in pencil, you can even rub it out. Um, just make sure they don't think it's an asymptote. But draw it in, and it's good for graphing, as well as to sort of understand how the symmetry still occurs in the sine graph, even though it's not along the x-axis. So we draw y equals sine x plus 2. However, if it was minus, then it would be the same thing. If it was, like let's say, minus 4, then the graph would just go down 4 units, and it would continue, and you'd have that sort of line of symmetry along there, at y is equal to negative 4. So what about if we now have the equation y is equal to 3 sine x plus 2. The reason why I put this one in is that there is a dilation, and you can see that by 3. So what's that mean? That means the magnitude is now equal to 3. So we've increased the magnitude. So instead of going up and down 1 unit, it's now going up and down 3 units. So this plus 2 isn't going to move it all the way up the, and clear the x-axis. So there's still going to be x-intercepts. So first thing it is draw the line of symmetry. So I draw this in, and if I draw that in here, then I know that it's shifted up two units. So this is going to be y is equal to 2. And this is just for graphic purposes. Then what's the graph going to look like? We know it's going to be there, and then it will go up, but it's going to go up three units and then once again hit the axis, and then it's going to go down 3 units. And because 3 is obviously greater than 2, we're going to get this point down here. So this point here will be 0, 2. Then at a maximum, it's going to be, 
um, pi on to 5. You once again hit it, then it'll go down to its minimum, 3 pi on 2, and that's going to be negative 1 because you're going to have 2 plus negative 3. So 2 minus 3 is equal to negative 1. So what happens when we draw this in? Well, if we draw in this equation, we'll get rid of what I'm drawing before, and then we can see what the graph looks like. So it does come up all the way up to the point 5, and then it also comes to the point negative 1. And because of this, there are still x-intercepts. So you can see that here. There's still an x-intercept, and there's still an x-intercept there. So you have, to be, you have to note the maximums, the minimums, and also the x-intercepts. But you don't want to, previously you may have drawn in the x-intercepts and then gone, okay, well you can just now draw in the shape from those x-intercepts. But because you've translated up or down, we can no longer do that. Rather, we can do that when we've looked at um, the line of symmetry. So if we look at the line of symmetry and we look at where it intercepts, then we know that it goes up, hits it again, then goes down, hits it, and we can reflect that. But we can no longer look at the x-intercept ones. But we do have to put in those points, and we have to calculate them. So how will we calculate those? Well, I've done a video on solving trigonometric equations, and we've that's when we've gone over how to solve these. So we just let y equal 0. Then we have 0 is equal to 3 sine x plus 2. So what we want to do is we want to get the trig function by itself. So we, get, we want to get sine x. So we get sine x is equal to negative 2 over 3. As this is not an exact value that we know, we then have to use a calculator to solve for the different values. But if it was an exact value, then we could work it out. So if you're not sure how to solve an equation like this, look at that previous video. So using this, we can work out what the x-intercepts are, get the line of symmetry, we know how to draw that in, and make sure you label the maximums and the minimum. And then often there'll be a domain restriction. So once again, if there was a domain restriction, so let's say there was an endpoint there and an endpoint here, make sure you, it's either an open or a closed. And either way, always label the endpoint with its coordinates. So what about reflections in the x-axis? So this is, so before we're looking at, uh, no, not reflections, translations. So before we are looking at translations in the y-axis, but now we want to know translations in the x-axis. So instead of moving it up and down, we are now going to move it across. So x-axis we are going to move it to the right or to the left. So to achieve this we replace x with x minus k. So we're, we're now, if we let k equal pi on 3, we are now going to get the equation y is equal to sine x minus pi on 3. And k is often not an integer, like it can be, but with regards like 1, 2, 3, but it can often be in terms of pi, which makes the calculations a lot easier if you're doing it by hand. So if we have x minus pi on 3, that means we have shifted it to the right pi on 3 units. This means that every um, part of the graph is going to shift across five units, uh, pi on 3 units. So if we get that graph, we can get it, and it's going to be the exact same. However, we're now going to move it across pi on 3 units. And then we're going to get the new graph along here. So before was 0, 0, and now the new start point. So the point that was previously there is now going to be here at pi on 3, 0. And it's often a good idea to keep track of sort of like the start point or where zero zero used to be. As where you know zero zero is, then it's a lot easier to draw the shape on either side. Just be careful of the reflections. So we have pi and three here, and then every part has been shifted across three units. So then we can just draw the new graph along here, along here. So the maximum has been shifted across three units. The x-intercepts have been shifted across three. The period hasn't changed. The magnitude hasn't changed. However, all the different intercepts and all the different points will have changed. So in solving these equations, we solve for sine x. Let, let, if we're looking at the x-intercepts, then we'll let y equal 0. We have 0 is equal to sine x minus pi and 3. Then we solve 
for let um, sign let's say A, and we can get the different solutions. Then we just add plus, or we have to move the pi and three to the other side. So then we just add pi and three to every solution. So before we had zero zero, and now it's going to be pi and three zero. This point here is at pi, but then we have to add pi and three. So it's going to be pi plus pi and three, zero. So obviously you don't leave it like that. You have to convert that to four pi and three, but I'm just showing that it's exact same points before, such as zero pi, two pi. However, now we just have to add pi and three, add it to every point, add it with the domain. The period is still two pi, so you can still go, well, that value, and then the next maximum is going to be two pi difference. However, we just need to be careful when you're solving the equation, the add pi and three, keep track of the start point, and then you'll be able to graph the equation.